Hi, I'm Anthony Mangano, and welcome to this special episode this week of City of Churches. We're making a return visit to St. James Cathedral Basilica on its 190th anniversary. Hi, I'm Anthony Mangano, and welcome to another episode of City of Churches. Today, we're gonna to be visiting the oldest parish in the Diocese of Brooklyn, St. James Cathedral in downtown Brooklyn. Now, we've got so much to show you that we've actually had to divide this episode into two parts. In part one, we'll uncover the earliest roots of the very first Catholic church in Brooklyn, and we'll explore its historical neighborhood. We'll discover surviving remnants of the original 1823 church and visit the grave of the parish's founder. We've also got highlights of some special events that took place in recent years. All this and much more in today's part one of City of Churches. We're going to be heading back to downtown Brooklyn today to discover the many new facets of St. James Cathedral Basilica. You see, our cameras were here a few years ago, but that one episode, it just wasn't enough to cover everything. You see, St. James is so unique and so important to Brooklyn, the history of Brooklyn and the Brooklyn Diocese, that we decided to come back on the occasion of its 190th anniversary. This is going to be a special episode, so stay tuned. Well, here we are on J Street, which was named after the first justice of the Supreme Court, John Jay. See, this street was a lot narrower then, until 1933 when it was widened, for the independent subway line linking Brooklyn to Manhattan. Now that's a big difference from the days when ferry boats were the only way to get to Manhattan. In the 1920s, the part of downtown Brooklyn was primarily an African-American community. This view is looking north down J Street towards the Manhattan Bridge overpass. Now here's the same view today. All those old buildings are gone. The street is wider, and the only thing that remains is the Manhattan Bridge overpass. Come on, there's a lot more stuff. Right now, we're near Brooklyn Bridge Park, near the old Brooklyn Navy Yard. The Navy Yard was first established in 1801, along 40 acres of waterfront property, and it remained open until 1979. Did you know that the first ironclad warships were built and tested here in the 1860s? That's amazing. How's that for some Brooklyn history, huh? It's amazing. If you look, you can see the old cobblestone and the old trolley track still sticking out through the ground, even though they tried to pave it over. The past always keeps coming back.
Today, this neighborhood is thriving. Since 1992, the 16-acre Metro Tech Center has been the home for America's largest university, Science, Industrial, and Technological Park, which includes Polytech Institute of NYU. Across the street is the Marriott Hotel, and down the street is the New York City Transit Museum, which is located in an old abandoned subway station, and it features old vintage cars and buses and transit memorabilia. And speaking of the past, we're going to head over to St. James Cathedral Basilica to celebrate their 190th anniversary, because they've been serving Brooklyn for almost 200 years. So come on. Sundays were a really big problem around here. The closest Catholic church was St. Peter's on Barclay Street, Manhattan, which meant a trip down to the waterfront and a ferry boat ride across the East River. Can you imagine those kids back then? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Those poor parents. Well, here we are at St. James Rectory, and we're going to head on inside and talk to Monsignor Strinkowski. There's a lot of fascinating stuff here, guys. So come on, follow us. You're going to have a great time. Monsignor, thanks for meeting with us and, and our viewers, and um, it's going to be a lot of fun because i got a lot of questions for you. <laughs> Let's begin at the beginning. Can you tell us about the history of the church, when and why it was established? Well, it goes back to 1822. Uh, that's the beginning of the parish. Actually, January 1st of 1822 is when a group of Irish immigrants got together and uh, they were, you might say, tired of going over to St. Peter's on Barclay Street, to taking the ferry over every Sunday for Mass. They wanted Mass here in their own neighborhood. And so they wrote to the Bishop of New York asking that a priest uh, be sent here and the Bishop uh, responded positively. And they then gathered the money to uh, purchase uh, this land on which the cathedral stands, and uh, then uh, began the building uh, of, of, a new ch of a church. And that church then, St. James, was dedicated on uh, August 28th of 1823. So that was the, the very first church building on, on this site. And it was in a Gothic style. It was small, but it was, at that point, it was adequate for their needs. And uh, that was the beginning of, of, of the parish. It was the first parish on all of Long Island, the first Catholic church on all of Long Island, from here to Montauk, the very first, and the third, the third Catholic church in what's today the city of New York. The other two being, before that, being St. Peter's on Barclay Street and Old St. Patrick's on Mott Street. And then came St. James here on, on J Street. And so uh, we have a wonderful history going back over 190 years at this point. Wow. I, I know I've got my, uh, my notes here. The founders, the, the early Irish immigrants, were uh, uh, Peter Turner. Mm, that's right. And that's, the, that's the monument to Peter Turner. Uh, the, uh, you might say he's considered the founder of the parish. Really? And uh, so it's a tribute to his vision, to his energy, to his foresight. To, to his leadership. So, uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to the memory of Peter so, Turner. Yeah, uh, who on January 1st, 1822, organized his 70 fellow Catholics for the purchase of this ground in which the first Catholic church on Long Island was erected. Born 1787, died 1863. Wow. So, long life. Uh, one of his sons became a priest for the Diocese of New York. So, uh, he served in the diocese. So, I think um, he 
uh, got his vocation probably from his father's leadership, his father's uh, care for wanting to establish a, a foothold for the Catholic Church on Long Island. So uh, when uh, this parish was established, uh, this was the Diocese of New York. Brooklyn, as a diocese, was, was not established until 1853. And that's when St. James then was made the cathedral of the Diocese of Brooklyn. Uh, and gradually, uh, the church on Long Island developed. I, and they didn't have underground, I could feel the subway station. That's going. right, that's right. That's I feel right, the trains right. going by. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That is such a lifelike bust. It's mm -hmm. amazing. It almost feels lifelike. Yes, it does. Yeah, 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 yeah. The eyes, so, especially, my Yeah, God. yeah. So it's quite, it's quite, a, quite a thing to, to remember that this is the seed of all the churches, parishes on Long Island. That's you're amazing. You're talking about uh, between the Diocese of Brooklyn and Diocese of Rockville Center, you're probably talking right now about uh, 300 parishes. Wow. And you're talking about maybe uh, three or four million Catholics. Jeez, it's mm -hmm. amazing. Mm -hmm. the, the early Irish immigrants were uh, uh, Peter Turner. Mm, that's right. Mm -hmm. Hugh McLaughlin, mm -hmm. William Purcell, and a dairy farmer, George McCloskey. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. Wow. They're, and they're all interesting people. Hugh, ultimately, he established a cemetery across the street from here oh. in order to, he, he was a very successful businessman and politician for the burial of, of poor people. And ultimately though, the city came along and uh, took over the property. The bodies were moved to another Catholic cemetery, but the city kept the name of the park as McLaughlin Park. So at least that much is still there. So we're walking here now. This is the pathway from the rectory to the church, to the cathedral. And you can see that it's, it's quite beautiful. It's sort of an oasis in the middle of the city. It's amazing, yeah, it's yeah. like a fort. <laughs> yeah, although you can hear the sound of construction all around us, that's, that's part of our life now. And uh, this is the cemetery. The, this is the remnants of, of the old cemetery. Oh, and wow. So here we have about uh, 50 or 60 people buried. And uh, so we, we are try these? to- Yeah, these are the tombstones. But a lot of them now are, uh, because of the weather and so on, they're worn down. But some are still legible. There is a, on the internet, you can get the names and dates of all the people who are buried in this small cemetery here. Wow. So it's still, you might say, so we still pay tribute, obviously, to, to those who have died. As I mentioned earlier, uh, it's kind of sad because um, it's it's graves of young children. And, yeah, see, see, I yeah. see John G. Mm -hmm. I can't make that out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they have to be over 100 years old. Oh, yeah, old. oh, yeah. They're from the 19th century, basically. I think the latest one might have been like 1904, 1905, something wow. like that. I mean, that's, that's amazing. Yeah, We're talking yeah. 114 mm -hmm. years, 110 yeah, years yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just about. Tell me... Um, about a little bit about St. James and how it's represented here. In the back of the church, uh, as you come into the church, there's a statue on the right. It's done in a somewhat modern style. And it's a great, actually, it's venerated by, especially by Haitian people. Haitians have a great devotion to St. James. And so they come frequently, they leave flowers, they leave, uh, flower, they leave uh, uh, prayer petitions. And then, of course, on the Feast of St. James, July 25th, uh, Haitians come in great numbers. Uh, we become almost, as it were, a shrine because of their devotion to, to St. James. I, I think you answered it. This is not the original church building? That's right. What happened was in 1889, uh, the old church building uh, was struck by lightning and uh, severely damaged. And so then it had to be replaced. And the new church was put up in 19, was dedicated in 1903, actually February 1st of 1903. The new, new church was dedicated uh, in an Italian Renaissance architectural style. Uh, the interesting thing about it, of course, is that it, is, it, is, it, par it rests partially on the foundations from the old church. Oh. So what they did was they built on, on some of the foundation of the old church and then they extended it so that it became a bigger church. Uh, and now, but here, when we come over here now, uh, this is where we see the, the, that's built over the foundations of the first church, the original church from 1823. Uh, so that, that section there. So it was, you can see it was kind of a small church. Oh, sure. Uh, and then when they built, rebuilt in 1903, they, they enlarged it. The, uh, the original church was, was Gothic and the architect was a man named Patrick Keeley 
who was responsible for uh, many, many uh, churches, especially cathedrals around the United States, a very renowned architect. The, the current uh, structure, the name, the name of the architect, his name is Streeter, and he's a Brooklyn native, and he was, he was the architect of, of the current church, which is in an Italian Renaissance style. Okay. Um, when was the rectory built? The rectory, uh, now, there had been a previous residence uh, across the street from the church, and then this, I believe, is around 1900. Uh, the, the current rectory is around, is around 1900. And it was the residence of the Bishop of Brooklyn, this being the cathedral, of course. The cathedral is, is the bishop's special church. It's where he presides on major occasions. And this was the rectory, un, uh, 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 the residence of the bishop until, I believe, around 1930. And then the bishop uh, obtained a house on Clinton Avenue, and that's where he has lived, he has lived since then, uh, in, in this house on Clinton Avenue, a couple of miles from here. But, uh, but originally from 1900 to 1930, it was the residence of the Bishop of Brooklyn. And now, of course, it's the rectory and, um, uh, of the, for the priests who are connected to the cathedral. Okay. Monsignor, can you tell, can you tell us why the, the televised Mass from St. James is so important to, to, to the viewers? Well, I think many, many people uh, living in Brooklyn, Queens, Manhattan, Staten Island can't get to ch church at all, can't get to Mass at all, uh, or maybe occasionally, depending on if they get a ride and so on. They're homebound, they're elderly, they're sick. And so I think that, that uh, having the Mass in their homes on a daily basis and on Sunday is a great consolation for them, and they're able to enter into the the spirit of the liturgy of the Eucharist uh, through uh, watching and uh, participating at home. And uh, one of the things we try to do here is to make sure they're included. I, in my homilies, I try to reach out to them uh, very explicitly. In a sense, it's, 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 it's almost like a, it's like a parish on a, on a grand scale because they also feel free to call, to write notes, uh, to uh, call, especially if they're having some problem, they want some, they want some advice or some uh, counsel, and so uh, it is. It's like having a, uh, I suppose you'd call it a media, uh, media parish, a parish through television. It to me, it's amazing because of modern technology. It's, it's a nice thing because mm -hmm. my father has got MS; he can't get out. So mm -hmm. people like that, mm -hmm. that can at least feel like they're still involved mm -hmm. in watching Absolutely. and watching, being at mm -hmm. mass mm -hmm. without physically being there. So they're getting the spiritual message. Mm -hmm. Um, what other events take, took place here, TV coverage and stuff like that? Well, obviously, uh, the Daily Mass is televised at noon and then, and then rebroadcast in the evening. The Sunday Mass is televised and then rebroadcast again later on on Sunday. But all the major events that take place in the diocese, like the Chrism Mass, uh, the ordination of priests, uh, uh, those take place here and are televised. Um, that eventually will change um, with the establishment of St. Joseph's as, as the co-cathedral. It's a bigger facility, and so I think the bishop's intention is that, that uh, liturgies that demand or that will have a larger number of people will take place there. But St. James obviously will still continue as, as the cathedral too uh, and for other events. But there have been other events here as well uh, that we've had over the years, uh, lecture series, uh, in terms of, of events being televised, there was there was a jazz concert. Uh, there was uh, a Christmas. There have been, there have been Christmas concerts. Um, so uh, a lot of lot of other outreach, you might say. Yeah, I, I was going to ask you that question next. Is that mm -hmm. I, I, there was a musical event lecture here, and, and I I I'm, I literally bugged out when I saw this. It was done by Father Charles and Lori Mangano the Christmas concert, and, and since Mangano's my last name, I, yes. was like, I got a little excited by hearing that. Mm -hmm. How was that? I, oh, that was very well attended. It was, a, it was uh, uh, every seat was taken, and uh, it, was, it was a very beautiful show, and uh, it was a fundraiser, uh, which benefited also St. James, uh, but it, it, was, it was a very, very, very beautifully, very well put together program. You know what? We have a little surprise for our viewers. We have some video clips of these musical events and highlights. So watch this. Christmas at the Cathedral. 
The popular father, Charles and Lori Mangano, did this special fundraising Christmas concert here for St. James. By the way, they're not related to me, even though we have the same last name. Shucks. Thy perfect light, oh, tidings of comfort and joy. Do you see what I see? A star, a star, dancing in the night with a tail as big as a kite. Oh, blessed baby Jesus, pour out your grace on us. This concert of sacred jazz was performed by the Bardoza Hadala Quintet, who played together for the first time at this event. Sitting in on the drums just for that night was jazz legend Billy Hart, who over the years had played with Miles Davis, Herbie Hancock, Sam and Dave, Otis Redding, and many others. Well, that concludes part one of our return to St. James Cathedral Basilica in downtown Brooklyn, which recently celebrated its 190th anniversary. But there's so much more to show you, so please, I ask you please, come back for part two of this special, special episode of St. James Cathedral Basilica. Now, remember, if you would like more information about this church or suggest any information about this church or any other church in the parishes, please contact us at netnewyork.net or you can follow us on Facebook or Twitter or you can write to us at City of Churches at 1712 10th Avenue, Brooklyn, New York, 11215. Until next time, for part two, I'm Anthony McGannell for City of Churches. God bless you.